Hi, in this video, I'll be covering filtering and slicers in Google Sheets. Filtering column data in Sheets is another way to help you narrow down on the important stuff in your data. Also, something a bit newer is called slicers, and I'll cover that closer to the end of the video. But did you know you could filter for values, conditions, or colors in Sheets? There's all sorts of ways you can tease out important stuff in your data with filters, and you can even hide your filtering when you're collaborating with others in Google Sheets. Let's check it out. So here in Google Sheets, we've got a range of data. And in order to have that range of data be filterable, you have to be in it. So for example, if I'm in this range of data, Google Sheets is smart enough to know that if I go under data, create a filter, it's going to create a filter by these little icons here. So it controls you to undo. If I'm out here, and I expect to create a filter, it's not going to create a filter there, right? If I go to create a filter here, it's just going to create a lonely filter out there. So I got to be inside the data, have an active cell inside the data, control Z to undo that. So let's go do that. Select any cell here. This is all contiguous data. So I'll just go and select create filter and it's created the filters for me. I can filter for a couple of things here. I can filter for values. Let's say for example, I want to uh, look clear, look clear the selection here. I want to clear, I want to have it for sales. So I'll just type in sales, select it to enable the check mark there. And then I have all the data coming back for sales. Now I can also do something for conditions. If I click on the filtering icon here again, you can see that there's a condition here. So there's kind of three ways I can do it here. I click on condition, the drop down comes up and there's many conditions that I can do. Empty, not empty, text, dates, greater than. And let's say for example, I want to do anything with an ING, anything with a text that contains ING, click OK. So anything with ING, it's going to bring back. Let's control Z to undo that. In addition, you can also do it by number. So let's say, for example, I want to do everything uh, greater than, I don't know, 30. So it's going to bring back everything that's greater than 30. And so that gives you my, your numbers there. Control Z to undo that. Also, it does colors. If, if you've got some kind of conditional formatting or you've got some color within your cells to highlight some particular cells or range of data, I have a couple here that are yellow accounting here. You can filter by color. Now, let's control Z to undo that. One thing about filtering is if you're sharing your sheet with other people, the filtering that you do shows up if they ever go into it. Now, if you want to do filtering and you just wanted to have it to show up in your own sheet, you need to turn on a filter view. So if I'm in my sheet here, I can go up here and I can create a new filter view or just save this as I have. I got my range here, which is correct. And they, you can give it a name if you want. And now you're in the filter view. And so you can do all the filtering that you want. Let's say, for example, I go back and do the color yellow. You can see the reference columns and the reference rows uh, show a black color and that's indicating to you that we're in a filter view. So if I X out of here, um, it disappears. And if I'm sharing the sheet with somebody else, they don't see that filter. In fact, I can even turn off the filter and it's not there. But if I want to see my own filter, I can just click on the filter icon here and go back to that name filter that I have and it turns it back on and I can do any of the filtering that I want. And if I'm sharing this with anybody, they don't see that. Let's get out of this uh, filter filter view. And another thing that we can do is, if we don't like to have the little filter icons here because they're not really that noticeable, another thing that we can do to filter is create slicers. So if I go under data, under here, add a slicer, we have a slicer and basically it's an icon representation of the filter. So it's asking me to select the data range. Uh, it I think it should have selected that for me, but it didn't. But it's suggesting one for me, which was my data range I had earlier, A1 to E201. I'm gonna take that, click OK. And now the filters are based, of course, on the column. So I'm gonna select the column. Which column do I want? I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna go over here and choose, maybe choose department. And so you can see that it lines up there. Let's move this over here and let's create a, another slicer. So I'll go to data, add slicer, and I'm gonna choose maybe country now, right? And I'm gonna put it over here. And there's one thing about slicers in terms of the placement where it makes it a little harder to use if you don't do some adjustment to your ranges. And I'll show you why. Because if we go to all, let's say I go to clear and I select the county again, and maybe now you can see that it has moved accordingly. The slicers have moved accordingly to the rows there. So I got to move this a little bit up here. And it, it just makes it a little bit messy when you think about it. Let me select this again and move it here. If I undo this filter, let's say, for example, I select all again, you can see that the filters have moved. And what happened to my country filter? It's moved down here. And so that kind of messes things up. And one way 
to fix this or to make sure that it doesn't happen is maybe we need to add some extra rows here kind of to almost simulate a semi dashboardy look and so i'm going to select some cells here let's say i'll select up to five cells here and insert an extra row right and then i can put these here let me move department over here and then move country over here select it and select it and move it over here and a good thing to do is to bring my to freeze my first uh, couple of rows and kind of keep it at the header here so this doesn't move right so if i scroll up and down you can see that that stays the same i can make my selections or filters before like i did before clear make accounting click ok you can see nothing has moved everything below it has moved if i do country and i just did uh clear china click ok you can see that it's all moved it's filtered nicely i don't have to worry about selecting that it's kind of readily apparent that these are filters here for you. So if this is something that makes it a little bit easier to view, a little bit easier to filter, and there's only a couple of things that we filter for, maybe having slicers there is not a bad idea. If we don't want these slicers to act as filters anymore, we can just delete them. Select that, delete. You can see that the filter has disappeared. Select this one, delete. That's disappeared. I can move this back up. I can go back, so let me scroll back up here. I can unfreeze my row selection, kind of move that back up there. I get rid of these rows and I am back in business with my original sheet. So that's how we can use filters and slicers as filters. I hope that seeing all the different options available to you from the regular old filters to slicers to creating filter views gives you ideas on how to manage information on your Google Sheets. To see more videos like this, click the banner at the end. Still here? Well, here's a joke. How does a hamburger introduce his girlfriend? Meet Patty. <laughs>